Happy Saturday. Welcome back. This again is Justin from Parody InfoSec. And I got to tell you, this newest box that's retiring quick, it was a whopper. I mean, this one really tried my patience and some new technologies that I'm not familiar with. And, and that's what this is all about. It's about growing. So this one is definitely going to be about HTTP3, uh, which is also known as Quick or Quick UDP Internet Connections. So we'll cover some new protocols. There's not a lot of clients that were capable of doing what we needed to do. Things have gotten a little bit better. I'm using a new version of Parrot. Got a new version of Kali sitting on the back burner as well. So with the newer versions, some of the stuff is built in a little bit better, but we're going to talk about bringing in the Quiche HTTP client. We'll be able to browse that HTTP3 data and start moving on to some of the other stuff. With that, we're also going to use the ESI gate remote code execution. There's a vulnerability out there, so we're going to employ that to get our shell. And this was probably the most difficult part for me. <laughs> as much as the, the quiche and the, the quick and the HTTP3 stuff was, this one really tried my patience because every slight little thing uh, made it on, you weren't really sure if it was going to work or not. Uh, in addition, with some of this, once you execute the payload, you run into some issues about not being able to execute again if it's the same name, so you would have to rename and re-go. And, and we might hit some of that in this video, but I think I've tried to, to find an easy way of doing this over and over again, repeatable, by using the Burp Suite proxy. So we'll, we'll cover some of that with Burp. There is some MySQL enumeration. We're just going to go through MySQL, pull down some of the data. Not a whole lot, but I found a way to use that to pivot into the second user. So I'm going to show you how to insert into a database, uh, trick some of that PHP code, and allow yourself to be uh, that next user up. Once you get in there, you're going to use print job page where you can print jobs to remote printers. We're going to be able to use that to pass data over to our client and we'll be able to use some information in there and enumeration to get some more password reuse. There's several instances of password reuse in this box, but this is it. Like very stripped down. You need a browser. You need burp. You're going to need that quiche in order to be able to access the HTTP3. There is the curl development version that you can use, I've heard, but I found Quiche to work once I figured it out. And then Netcat. That's it. Just a couple tools. But this one is a tricky one. So let's get started. As I mentioned, I switched over to Parrot this week just to give it a try. See if I like it. I'm going to bring up the new 2020.3 for Cali. I really hate moving, but I'm several versions behind, so it's time to, to upgrade and play around with some of the stuff. There's a really cool uh, project out there for the theme when it comes to the, the Palm Box. So if you want the Palm Box, the Guild Hall on GitHub has all his instructions on how to convert a Parrot version into looking like what you see on Palm Box. I didn't go through those steps. I was just trying to get it up and working tonight. So we'll see if I tweak it a little bit and, and tailor it. But for right now, we're going to go with out of the box. This is what a Parrot OS is capable of doing with a minor addition of quiche. All right. So as always, we'll get started with an end map. So we'll do end map. We'll do a T5 VV so we can take a look at everything. We'll do 10, 10, 10, 186. And we'll do we'll do normal ports. But I will I have a new versions. Just see if we can find some information out about what we got. So we'll let that go ahead and run. We have two ports that come up. 22, 9001. So we know that 22 is going to be SSH access. Uh, likely on a hard box like this, you're not going to see anything until later. So we did have two things come up and 9001 is actually an Apache HTTPD. So that is going to be a normal website. That's what we should be looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at that, but I want to run all ports 
and I'm gonna run uh, UDP and TCP. And we'll get into that here in a minute once we talk about how HTTP3 works, but go ahead and run that as sudo. Let's open up our browser. Had a little bit of a difficulty setting this one up, trying to get burp, but now that I've got my Foxy proxy and everything set up, we should be able to pull everything up just fine. Get that proxy up and running. And the first thing you gotta do every time the burp starts up, if you do a fresh start every time, just turn your intercept off. That way everything goes through. So we'll do a 10, 10, 10, 186, and then 9001. One of the things you gotta be watchful of is this right here. This is HTTPS everywhere. It comes default on Parrot. It comes turned on. If this is turned on and you try to access this website, well, it's already loaded. But if, if it's turned on, you're gonna have an issue where it, it won't accept it because it's just normal traffic. We'll blow this up. So there's a couple of different panes here. There's an update. We are migrating our portal with the latest TLS and HTTP support. Read more about our services, please navigate to our portal. And if you do a mouse over, you can see it's secure, HTTPS portal.quick.htb. So that's definitely something that we're going to want to add to our Etsy host. So sudo nano Etsy host. Uh, being that's a new build, we'll put HTTP up here. We'll say 10, 10, 186 is going to be, oof. Portal.quick.htb. Close that out, save it. Come back over here. So we got that. You might experience some connectivity issues during portal access, which we're aware of, working on yada, yada, yada. There's a, a login. So you click on this, you get to a login. Let's see, forgot password. That's uh, just a fake link. So there's no way to reset a password. So at this point, we're going to need to find emails and passwords. So let's go back. On this page, it's got testimonials talking about the services. And here you have a couple names, Tim, Roy, Elisa, Alyssa, James, um, and some of the companies. So let's go ahead and start making our users list. So we're sitting in this file, perfect. So nano users, um, and we'll just move this over to the side real quick. So we know we have a Tim, we have a Roy, Elisa, and James. Cool, that's a couple, that's not too bad. We'll just save that for right now. There's also a link right here, check out our clients. So it gives you a client and it gives you a country. This is kind of a weird CTFE thing that was added in here. You gotta play around with this. There's client name, so Q Consulting Private Limited. Um, that one's probably gonna be Q Consulting. Darkwing Solutions could be Darkwing, Darkwing Solutions, US, could be .us, could be .com. And this is kind of a game of trying to figure out what the email addresses are. So we'll just do nano domains. Let's scoot this over. So we can do Q consulting and we know that it's the UK. So let's go .uk. We can go Q consulting .co .uk, commercial. Same with Darkwing. So Darkwing can be .com, could be .us, it's not usually a common thing. We've got wink.uk, we've got wink.co.uk, 
co.uk and just keep going down. Uh, China's just CN. Scooby Doo dot Italy. I, I just don't see that happening. Um, on Penguin, you actually have Penguin Crop. If you look on the previous screen, I believe it's Penguin Corp. Penguin Corp. So it can go either way. And we'll just do an FR. Cool. So we've got a couple users, a couple domains. Let's go back to that login and see if we get any user enumeration right out of gates. So let's say it was a Tim at darkwing.co.uk. Uh, so this one says invalid credentials. There's a pretty good idea that it's not gonna give out, say, username versus password. So we'll go ahead and just put that on the back burner for right now. Now that we know that we have a website, let's go ahead and do a GoBuster. And same word list as always, so user share word list durbuster directory two three medium it's it's a basic um, i have a pretty good internet connection so we'll go with that uh, if we go back over to this page we see that they are using phps so you definitely want to add your extensions for php ah and you got to make sure to add the right port And to tell it is, it's HTTP. Now we got, okay, so we got the login page. There's a search page. Let's see what happens if we go to search, search.php. Nothing. Home.php. Invalid username, password. So that's something that requires you to be logged in to access and it kicks it back to the login. Uh, you're gonna see same thing. Clients PHP, we took a look at db.php. That's always a favorite. It's definitely a database file. Nothing. All right, no information. And then ticket, ticket's another one. Invalid username password. We're, we're just gonna keep hitting the wall on this one. Um, so we've seen that there's some files here. We're definitely going to want to come back and take a look at these once uh, we can find some access. Um, see if we got anything back on our port scan. I mean, this one, this one will take forever. I didn't do this ahead of time, um, but I did want to show you if you actually limit it to the right ports. So 443, being that it's HTTP three, it's still gonna take a second, but it did find a service on 10.10.10.186. 10, 10, if we're just gonna go to HTTP here, so HTTPS, we know that it said TLS. So normally you'd say, okay, TLS, we do know that it's called portal dot quick dot HTTP. Comes back failed. Nothing at 443. And try and curl. Um, portal dot quick dot HTTP. Say 443. And it's going to say fail to connect, connection refused. So we kind of hit a little bit of a wall here, waiting on some of this enumeration. So we'll go ahead and move along knowing that it's there. I'll show you when we get back, but this box definitely needs you to start playing with quiche. And so if you go to the GitHub, GitHub quiche, 
is out there and it's put out by the Cloudflare folks. So Cloudflare has a nice little write-up on how to access it. Go ahead and bring that over for you. So if you just git clone this, make sure to say recursive. If you don't say recursive, it will screw everything up. And then you just have to build. And the real link that you're looking for is running it. It's, it's up at the top. And this is the, the final, once you've got it installed, you just run this command. And obviously change out the website. Uh, but there's also another issue about the certificate. So you just have to say no verify. So we'll go ahead and give that a try. I do have key shorty loaded. So we'll, we'll go ahead and go to, we'll go ahead and go to my version here. Oh, and it came through. So it did say on 443, there is UDP, it is open. So there's something there. So with a little bit of understanding, let's go ahead and take a look at this quiche. So I did do a revert. So we'll go ahead and just install it on the fly here. So that same web page I was showing you right here is exactly how we're going to get through it. So we'll make sure that we want to build it. So like I said, we're going to go git clone uh, recursive. So we're sitting in the right folder, sudo git clone recursive and let that run. All right, same thing, sudo. Uh, and for this one, we actually need to be inside the folder. So we'll move up to quiche, sudo, cargo build examples. It's going to fetch some information. It's going to go ahead and pre-build that, that code that we're going to run for quiche. This looks like it's going to take a hot minute to compile. One of the other issues that I ran into on this one is you need to have CMake. So CMake is what you need to compile the program. If we try to compile it here in a second without it, see right now it says, hey, CMake is not installed. So I do remember running into that before. You can just do a sudo apt-get install CMake. All right, we're all set now. With make, we can go ahead and make that. So as we build it, this time it's going to go through. It's going to say, hey, I got CMake so I can build quiche. It's one of the things that was sitting in the background so that we can run this. All right. It's all built and ready to go. So using that original base code, we're going to take a look at the TLS issue that is described by the, the vendor on their website when we first logged in. So go ahead and paste this in. It's going to try and build. I don't want to build for this address. I want to build for what we're trying to look at. So portal dot quick dot htb and it's going to just be running on 443 shouldn't have to specify it but we'll go ahead and do it anyways and then it's going to go ahead and fetch that down it's fetching it all over udp uh, it's kind of interesting the way this is all going to work with 
uh, a little bit faster, but you get a permission denied. Uh, and this one's because you need to run this as sudo. So now you see it compiling, running everything. It's going to go through all its code, compile, 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 and then it's going to spit out what you would hope would be some HTML. In this case, the TLS issues that they're encountering is part of them just not having their site set up right. And we're going to see that where it's going to reject and kick back. We're not able to take a look at uh, this page. When I went through this the first time, I did not have an understanding of cargo. So I was installing Rust and trying to figure out all this different code. Like I said, there is an alternative with the curl development version. Couldn't get that working. Uh, I think this one got me stuck for a couple weeks. Um, in the end, probably a couple months, just because it was so frustrating that I just couldn't get going. So if you experienced that, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope that this helps walk you through. We all had the same problems. So everybody struggled with the same issues on this box, but uh, let's just kind of walk through this slowly, step by step, and it won't be so bad. So right there, you receive a TLS fail message. And that's a bummer. It is going to the right right website. So we're going to go ahead and you just have to add no verify. Seems like such a simple thing. Obviously you want it to be secure. It's kind of dumb to say no verify, but you do that and now you get that website. Now I don't have the browser set up. Uh, there are a couple other clients that allow you to take a look at it. Curl allows it to look better. But you can see it's pretty basic. There's a portal with a home. There's contact, about, and docs. So you can just go through and enumerate each one of these. We can just drop this right here at the end. So the contact is going to come down and it's going to say, uh, tell us your first name, last name, country. And they have the options for Australia, Canada, and USA. This is a little bit more. Considering the previous page gave us Italy, France, China, uh, so they didn't have Canada, Australia. I'm not going to mess around with that. It's, it's a little bit of a rabbit hole. So the next one we want to take a look at is the about. I guess really I can just come in here and say about. The about page is going to give you a couple folks. John Quick. Mike at Quick, Jane at Quick. So we'll go ahead and make another list. And these will be, uh, we'll call this Quick Users. These are specific ones. So John at Quick.htb, Jane. And I believe Mike. Just come back over and take a look real quick. John, Mike, Jane. All right. Just so we have those in case we need them here in a minute. And the last one is called Docs. Let's see what Docs does. So Docs comes in, and there are two documents available. There's a quick start PDF and a connectivity PDF. All right, so this gets a little funny if you haven't used curl is kind of the same way. But if we put this in here, we'll get a PDF back. <laughs> it's not readable. Just make sure that you say, you know, quick start PDF. So I do remember this being a little bit of an issue. You just put it in the wrong folder. So HTTP and quick. And it looks like we saved it there. Go ahead and 
open this HTV quick and there's our quick start guide so the quick start guide so the quick start guide is going to walk us through the quick broadband services it's a little flyer gives us some information power on the router sit back we can figure everything and inform you with the credentials to log in read more on the website portal quick HTB. not really helpful there all right now if we go back up Let's do this again. If we uh, come in here, we can do the same thing with docs.connectivity. Looks like it pulled it down, so we'll just come back over to this folder and there's our connectivity. How to connect. So you can navigate to 172.150.4, quick log at JSP, use your registered email and quick access as a password. More on their website, quick.htb. So that's their normal website. So we want to copy this. This is going to be a good one. So, and I'll pass. Put that puppy in there. So we've got a pass and we've got a few different users. So let's see if we combine them, if we can get somewhere. So let's go back to this page, the login page. I'm going to go ahead and fire up my burp suite for this one and go ahead and intercept this. We'll just say admin at admin.com. Doesn't matter, we're about to change it here anyways. And then this one's password. As we intercept the packet, we can see everything's in clear text. I'm going to push this to intruder. Don't know if I push that one. Normally it lights up, there it goes. So intruder, we're gonna do 186, 9001. We're gonna go ahead and clear the fields. What we're really focused on is username. We're going to focus on the domain. We're going to leave that at, that percent forty as an at sign, so I don't want to have to mess with that. And then with this one, there's there's only one field for password. And you know, with that, we'll go ahead and put the password in here. We only know one password, so we'll leave it there. So. Cluster bomb's the one that we want. Payload one, payload two. So payload one is going to be, maybe we can say a runtime file. And we can just go back up, go to home, parity, HTV, quick. And then in here, this is gonna be our users. And then two is gonna be a runtime file. And this is gonna be our domains. We'll go ahead and start the attack. Usually this takes a little while just because you have so many uh, combinations and you start to slow down with the way that uh, burp uh, throttles back. But as you can see, there's 40 max here. And I really want to look for the status field. We want to see a 302 usually, and we got one. Cool. So 302 is a redirect. You see that we did the post login, 302, and then it's redirecting to home. So location home. So we've got a valid pass. So it's eliza at wink.co.uk with that password. Now, one of the other things to take a look at as you look at these responses. Uh, it does signal that there's a ESI gate. That's a little bit different. It's it's 
proxying the traffic on its own side and forwarding it. So let's just keep that in mind. Um, but we are good to go. So using that password, let's try Elisa, Elisa at wink.co.uk. Make sure to turn our proxy back off. And we're in, we are logged in. So there's a couple different floaty things running around here, but most of this one is ticket. Uh, and this will probably be that search function. When we were looking at our information earlier, those are some of the pages that came through. So if I want to raise a ticket, I could put one in here and just say test, test one, and submit. Comes back and says ticket 9998 was raised. Got to remember that because 9998, try and do a search. And this search function ran into a couple different issues when I was playing around with it. It just wasn't providing me what it should have. If we look at the proxy, history, you're going to see that a search was pushed forward. No real reason why they just kind of hang in the system. Ah, but do they hang? So here's the problem. The host that we're going to is quick.htb. When we went and we looked at our Etsy hosts, we only put in one field and that was portal.quick.htb. So you just gotta come back in here, do a quick.htb. And then now when we search, I think I kind of ran into an issue with this when I ran this box where it really wants to be logged in as one and not bounce around. So we'll go ahead and log back in. Man. Boy, I am done. Quick dot htb 9001. There we go. All right. Goodness. So we've got to log back in. And wink dot co.uk winkle that is not going to be the right password so cat pass and we'll just come grab it again so let's try this one more time test test Submit 2029. Now we have a ticket. Whew. So let's try and play around some of the tickets. We'll try that same thing I discussed. Script alert one script just to check for that. I found this one to be kind of funny. I'll just go ahead and play around with some HTML tags. Oof. And submit that one. 1229. And it does work where it allows you to do uh, some HTML tagging. Well, that's about it. The interesting thing is, as it's coding this page, as well as when you submit a ticket, it's using that ticket ID and it's redisplaying it or rerunning it. So this is one of those weaknesses that we're going to look at where what can we do with those fields? It is the parameter being used. So can we manipulate that? And so if you go and you look for ESI gate, this is where we get into the ESI gate. Um, vulnerability. 
Now, several people put it out. Uh, this is just the ESI injection that was put out by GoSecure. And this kind of steps through. If it's querying strings inside, you can put in line this command of ESI and it'll pop up. You can also do RCE through using a combination of ESI include XML files and style sheets. And through the combination of both, mainly the style sheet, you can use any source here. Your style sheet is going to be where evil.com can drop in some information and then you can go through RCE and the RCE you know, we'll go ahead and copy this, but you can touch files. If you can touch files, that means you can do a couple other things. Uh, what we're going to prepare is a three stage payload, which is pretty common. We'll go ahead and W get. So pull down and you never know. Sometimes if they don't have W get, you're going to have to do it all through the blind because when you run a Python HTTP server, you're going to see if the files are getting pulled or not. So you'll see here in a minute where it's going to pull uh, the first payload and then it's going to pull the first uh, ESI payload, the second ESI payload, and then it's going to pull the other payload because wget works. And then as you go through the steps, you're going to take that file that we load up on there in this case, it's going to be a pretty basic uh, bash reverse shell. We're going to chmod modify the permissions in order to make it executable. And then we'll go ahead and run it. So I've prepped some of that stuff. And I will just bring it over. So you're not sitting here watching me type all the fun stuff. Get this out of the way. Bring these files up and I'll just go ahead and pull them all over. And we'll go through them a little bit one by one. Just make sure they're all there. Cool. So cat payload all. And they'll just kind of run together a little bit but I went ahead and just did one two or one one two two three three you can put any website you want but I went ahead and put my payloads in here uh, so you'll see uh, this is my IP for today so 1426 and I'm telling it to w get this payload and then output it to dev shm payload.sh that's where I like to put things the next command is going to jamod plus x dev shm payload.sh. And then the last one is going to just say run dev shm payload.sh. I guess to really be successful, I'm going to need to bring over payload.sh. Payload so I'll drag that one over as well. Uh, another issue I ran into this box was I was changing IPs from the last time that I did this. So always make sure there's another way that you can do this, which is just cat all. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and say cat all payload. And then we'll just say grep for 10, 10, 14. Just make sure all your IPs are right because this is a super blind attack. You don't know what's going on on the back end. So just Definitely make sure your IPs are good. 1426, 1426, and 1426. We're going to be getting a reverse shell on 443. So we'll go ahead and open that up here. And that's obviously going to be a sudo. And BLP. So we got a listener set up. The easiest way to do this is to intercept and manipulate. Let's go ahead and close this. And we can close this now. And we will go ahead and turn our intercept back on. I'll just submit this. You see it comes in the box, it's test, test, ticket, 
Like I said, this ID parameter is what is executed in the next two pages. So we're going to go ahead and use that as the parameter that we do our ESI injection on. So I'm going to move that over to my repeater. And we're going to run that same code. Let's see if I can do this right. ESI include, it was source equals, and then my box slash payload one dot XML. And there was another part to it. <laughs> ESI injection had style sheet equals, and then that'll be the bad file. So we'll go ahead and say style sheet equals, and same thing 10, 10, 14, 26, payload one dot. Uh, this was an XSL style sheet. Just double check real quick. ESI include, da, da, da. bracket came after the style sheet, and then a slash ESI include. And then I've got a mixture of single and double quotes, so that's no good. So this is going to pull that first payload. So I better have my web server setup. So we're sitting in the right folder with everything. So we'll go ahead and just do a pseudo Python three HTTP dot server and do 80. All right. So we got a listener on 443 and we got our ports and we've got our Python set up. I'll go ahead and detach this tab real quick. Shrink it down. Just bring it down here for right now. And we're going to go ahead and run this code. Well, that's going to be a no-go. That might be part of the problem. There we go. So payload one XSL, XML, and you can see that it did the wget for payload. Uh, it gives a little bit of information over here. Just shows the command that it ran, gave a PID, uh, not exited, means that it went through fine. Uh, I tried to run this through Intruder, and to be honest, Intruder runs it so fast that it doesn't have time to wget the file. So it doesn't have time to chmod, and then you can't run it. So the best way to do this is you can either code it. I've seen some people's coding on Python for me. Just went ahead and did this. We'll see it grab two, two. We don't know if it's modded, but it came back not exited. So we're two for two as far as we can tell. So let's see if this works. On the third one, we should get a shell. Oh, ha. Third, and we are Sam. So Sam at quick. Let's see what we got. So we got a user. So let's go ahead and just cat user, not text. User, yay. This one's a little tricky. I'm gonna tell you to keep hitting this shell, you've gotta have payload after payload after payload. So you don't wanna mess this up too many times. I've had to reset this box so many times, uh, more because I didn't wanna keep making payloads. Uh, but we've got our user. So what do we do now that we got user? Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those directories. So var dub dub dub. You see there's an HTML. Uh, there's also a jobs and a printer one. Let's start with HTML. Clients, DB, home, index, login, all the same ones. I want to look at DB because that one's a fun one. And there we go. We've got our DB creds right there. 
db admin, db pass, quick is the database. So we should be able to go in and take a look at the database. I like to look at logins. Um, just because login pages have PHP code, if you saw any of my previous videos, there's always, if you have write access, there's always ways to manipulate this. This box, you do not have write access. So that's not something that we can employ, but you can see that it is doing some weirdness. So it's gonna say, you know, if email and password's there on the post, take the email, take the password, and then with the password, you're going to uh, add a little information, you're gonna crypt it, MD5. So this ends up being a super annoying, you can code it, there are things out there that show you how to break it down. I'm gonna show you how to bypass it and just say to hell with it. Uh, but as you go through, select email password from users, so you're gonna pull that back in the statement. So if anything in the database matches, bring it back, and that goes into result. Result, they're gonna look at how many rows. If there's more than zero rows, you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and log in. If not, they're invalid creds. So we already have a good set of creds. We're gonna use this here in a little bit. So that's that. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the database. To do that, I've got to get a little bit better terminal. Whoa. Go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna be able to do some commands back and forth. So we'll do a MySQL. Uh, we're gonna tell it we wanna go to database quick. Uh, the host is gonna be localhost. We're gonna use user db adm and we're gonna give it a password. So db underscore p4ss. And we're into MySQL. So we'll just say show tables because we are sitting in the database for quick. We've got jobs, so that's kind of interesting. Jobs, we haven't seen that quite yet. We've got tickets, so if you were to say select star from tickets, you're gonna see those tickets that we put in there, test one, two, three, they made it in there. We just weren't able to, to view them back because of the mistake on my side of the house. Uh, they're all in there. What you don't see are what we executed to get the shell. You don't see those files getting pulled over because those were stuck into the ID of ticket. You can't put the ticket information in there. The field doesn't allow for that kind of information that we, we did. So now we'll do select star from users and we see Elisa and we know what that password is. We now see there's an SRV admin at quick.htb. We don't know what that password is. And this is where with that MD5 crypt, it gets super annoying to try and break this down. I don't even care about it. We don't want to take a look at that, but we do know that we are looking for that user SRV serve admin. So we're going to keep that in our, in our brain bucket. So I'll go ahead and exit this. Um, and we'll come back out. We're going to look at printers. Printers. Oh, I went too far. Printer. So I'll start with catnet db php to see if there's any other credentials in this one. So it appears to be another website, same credentials. So it uses the same database that we were just looking at. This one has ad printer, it has home images, it has an index, job printers. Okay, well let's cat index, because that's always fun. Go to the top. There we go. DB, get the email password, email password, MD5 crypt, go through, find that information, bring it back. 
it's got a little bit different if statement here. It's going to say if rows are more than zero, so there's got to be somebody in the database, and the email has to be srvadmin at quick.htb. Uh, any kind of sly ways around it, trying to make other user admins, it doesn't matter. It's got to be SRV, ADM, and we know that this file is not writable. So that's kind of the hang up. But understanding the logic that it's looking for this email, uh, I'm very interested, interested to see this website because we have a great way around it. Well, how do we how do we look at this website? Well, we got to figure out where is it at. All right. So with that enumeration, let's do a net stat and up, and we see the 3306. There's an 80. Didn't let us do an 80 before. And it's only allowed at 127.001, so it's kind of local. 8081, you've got your 443 on UDP, your 9001, 22. Okay, so we already took a look at the MySQL. Let's see what happens. Uh, which curl? So let's curl 127.001. And we already have 80. It comes back on the page. So this is what's viewable. We kind of already knew that by looking at the index, but we can see that it is serving it up. But this one is new broadband services, migrating our portal. This is the same page. Super weird. Well, it's an issue that we're going to run to time and time again, where it's using a different virtual host and essentially we've got to kind of track down the virtual host um, some of the places you would find that is in etsy hdbd so if you go to etsy cd hdbd not finding anything so it's, it's not sharing its information quite the same. Now, if you look in here, there is an Apache 2, and we know that it's running Apache as its a server framework. So we'll go ahead and say CD Apache 2. Uh, there's config file, there's mods available, ports, sites available. Let's do a quick check. Sites available is a directory. And there's some configurations in here. Let's see what they say. Oh, I already see the good words. So virtual hosts, these are different virtual hosts. So star 80, so anything 80 is gonna pull from far www.html. So that's why when we did 127.001, we ended up with the same page that we were seeing on our 9001 port. Just the normal HTML. You keep coming down. There is a virtual host for 80 here. And the document root is that printer, but the server name is different. So server printer v2 quick htb. Okay. Whoa. So we'll go back over this window. So sudo nano Etsy hosts. Come in here and we will add printer v2 dot quick dot htb. Let's see if we can surf to that page. Make sure we turn our burp off. We've been intercepting this whole time. So HTTP uh, printer v2 quick .htb. No. Again, when you looked at that net stat, you could see 
they're only accepting connections from 127. Let's see what it says. So only local connections. And the way around this is to do an SSH tunnel. So we'll go ahead and SSH back to my box. So SSH, and we're gonna say parity at 10, 10, 14, 26. And then we're gonna do remote, port forward, and we're gonna say uh, 8998, doesn't really matter. That's just the port we're gonna use to access it. And then we're gonna say redirect it to 127, 1, 1, and 80. Run that, connection is refused. I need to turn my SSH back on. See my port 22 is on now. So we'll try that again. Connect, give it the fingerprint, give it the password, and that's definitely us. All right. So if you run a net stat, you're going to see there is an 8998. But we've got to go back in and change our Etsy host file because the way this works is it's not going to see this port as a 10101086. 10, 10, it's actually going to see it locally. So we're going to redirect to our local machine um, on port 8998 using <laughs> the virtual host. And through that combination, it's going to hit the other side at port 80 with the virtual host on it. It's a little bit tricky. This one was a little bit of a pain to figure out. Uh, but we have all our port 40 set up. We've already said this. We just got to add uh, 8998. And we've got a new sign in page. Okay. Sweet. We can take a look at this. Uh, but this is that sign in page that we were reading where it said it can only be SRV ADM at uh, quick.htb. It's the only thing it's going to accept. Let's try the handy dandy password we do have. So maybe that'll work, right? No, that's not going to work. And like we said, we don't know how to change those credentials. Um, well, I mean, there, there's two ways. You could be destructive and you can go in and modify the database to wipe out the current password, but they're going to know if anybody's getting into the system, they're going to know there's something messed up. And if you're out doing an actual pen test, you don't want to wipe out people's passwords. That's just not good practice. There is a workaround that I was able to figure out. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to actually open up another. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and open up another reverse because I don't want to mess with my tunnel. I could have opened it up with uh, no feedback and it would have been able to run in the background. Didn't do that. So for right now, I'm going to copy the payload three into payload four. It's essentially what I'm going to do. Do the same thing with XLS, XSL. And we're ready to go. Pseudo NC MBLP 442. We're listening. We just got to go back to our burp. And it's still sitting in the repeater. It just changes to four. And we'll open up another reverse. You can open up a bunch if you feel like it. I tried to find a couple different ways to get some persistent access on this one. And it's a tricky box. Uh, but if you follow some of these steps here in a minute, we're going to have SSH access, and that's what really makes me happy. All right.
So we've got this access. I need to upgrade my shell because we're going to try and do some more um, MySQL. And to do that, you, you can't do it from the shell that we've got. That looks good. All right, so we'll go back in, do MySQL, uh, H local host, uh, D was quick, user was DB ADM, and then we'll give it a password. So DB P4SS. So let's go ahead and select all from that users table and talk about this. With this users table, there's a name, email, password. With normal databases, there's a key. With this one, there's not. So we're going to talk about how you can have duplicate entries. With uh, a unique key, you would only be able to have one thing. Um, I could probably make a name email and password all duplicates depending on how this works because it's not really tied to another database it's just information um, but we use a trick for insert into and this just allows me to enter a new user into the database as an admin this wouldn't seem that weird um, because we're going to go ahead and enter in all fields i'm not going to worry too much you can specify column 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 you don't have to do that in this case uh, but we'll go ahead and say, I am bad guy, because that's name. The next field is email. I'm going to make it the same, SRV ADM at quick.htb. And I will finish. And just to make it not complicated, I'm going to use that same password that we got because we know that that password works instead of making a new one. Everything looks good. We'll finish it off. I have something wrong. Yeah, I'm definitely tired because that was a pretty basic mistake now that I'm seeing it. So we're going to do it all over again. Insert into users. And then you got to say values. What are the values? Um, and then from here, I should be able to copy and paste again. Now we're good. So we've put that information in. So if I say select star from users, you're going to see bad guy, server admin, at quick.htb, and then the password is the same as Elisa's. So when we look at that logic from that page previously, it's going to make sure that a line comes back. So if we put in this user's information, we're going to get a line back. And we know all this information because we know the password and we know this, this email. And then it's going to match the same email as this server admin. And it's going to let us in. If the normal server admin comes in and he puts in his email and this password, that will also work. So this allows a second access into the system while not interfering with the first one. So it's a nifty little kind of covert, not super quiet, but it's there. So let's go ahead and try it. SRV ADM at quick.htb. So we'll just go ahead and use this window. So HTV quick. If I come in here and I say cat pass, there's our password. And we will bring it over here. And we are in. So we found a little way to bypass that login. Uh, and I don't think there's much to this website. So we got printers. No printer is added, so add printer or add one here. And this is a print server. 
which is going to connect to another computer. So we'll just call this one bad guy as well. Um, and this one doesn't allow you to do anything. It has to be a network printer. It has to use this. You can change the IP address and the ports. So let's put our own information in here. And then I will just make this a bunch of sixes. That way I know it's mine. And we need to open up a listener. With that listener on, we're going to click Add Printer. It says, hey, printer was added. So we're good to go. Go look at the printers. Hey, there's printers. When you mouse over this, this looks like it does print job. This one deletes. So if you're going to print jobs, uh, printer is up. It's going to act like it actually tried to print. If anything was sitting in the queue, it would have printed it there. So one of the things you're going to do is make sure to put your shell back up every time. So we'll kind of run these side by side just to make sure we don't make that mistake. Uh, it does say, please add a job. So here we're going to print to bad guy. I'm going to say, can you see this? When I click print, it's actually going to show up over here saying, can you see this? It's got a little VA cancel down there but we can go on and on and on. This is going to keep working. Let's take a look at how it builds the print jobs. So I know we open another shell over here. So we'll exit out of this one. And we will go back to those bar dub dub dub. Uh, I think everything's in printer. So we look at it again, there is one called job. There's one called printers. Let's try job. So cat job.php. Go up, look at the PHP. Okay, you're gonna submit. What it's gonna do with the submit is whatever's in the title. So on ours was bad guy, it's gonna put in the title. And then it's gonna look for the year, month, day, and this is gonna go down to the hours all the way to the seconds and call that file. Then it's going to do a file put contents in the var www jobs. So that file is going to be put into jobs uh, along with uh, you're going to put the title into the file. It's going to modify the permissions to 777 and then it's going to run the connection, execute the statement, get the results back, number of rows greater than zero, uh, fetch. So it's going to make sure that there's something out there, make sure that the printer's out there. Coming down here, it's going to sleep for half a second, just a buffer. It's going to get the file contents, cut, close, and then it's going to unlink that file. So it's important to understand the logic of this PHP. So it's going to make this file. Now, how do we know what the name of that file is? It's going to be instantaneous. It's going to come in. It's going to sleep for half a second, do its thing, and it's gone. Uh, there's a couple ways you can go about this. I'm going to go through a bash script that kind of sits in the back end. Um, but every time we make a print job, it's going to make a file for a very short period of time. And one of the tricks is, let's take a look at the jobs folder. So there's nothing in the jobs folder. Can't see anything touch, I'm gonna say test. So I can make a file. So I have write access in this folder, but then it's gonna chamod it to execute. And it's gonna execute as server admin from the looks of it. So I'm, I'm very intrigued by this one. Let's see what we can do with start by removing tests. Uh, there's a way to link 
So you can link files. Um, I could probably, uh, can't pull root because server admin doesn't have that. Let's see if we can find anything inside of uh, server admin. Well, there's nothing really good, but there is an SSH folder. We're not gonna be able to get into the SSH folder without having a few more writes, but we can go ahead and try and pull their SSH key. Uh, we can try and put our key into authorized keys. For this time, I'm going to switch it up and try and pull the private key for the user, bring it down to my desktop. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to send a print job while I have a loop running in the background. So this is going to be a while. Um, no, you know what? I had a while loop get stuck earlier today, and I just don't really care for a while, while true right now. I like to have something with a finite amount of time. So for I in, and we will just call this one to 10,000. A short time, but not too short. It gives us an opportunity to get what we need done. We're going to say do, and then you're going to say for file in. And I'm going to have it go ahead and run an ls. So every time it runs through this cycle, it's going to say ls in this directory. And for every one of those files, I'm going to have it try to do something. So I don't have to know the name of it. I don't have to know the hours, minutes, second, day. I don't have to know any of that. Uh, there is a way that you can kind of generate that on the back end, but this is the quicker way to just say anything in there. Go ahead and pull it. Um, I want to go ahead and delete it. So RM, and then you're going to say F, because if you don't put an F in there and you don't force it, it's going to ask you. And you're not going to be able to answer fast enough to say, yes, yes, I want to delete that. By that point, it's already gone by the processing of the job. So we'll go ahead and say, Let's delete the file rm dash f. And we're going to say file. And then we will actually, I need to do a do statement here. So do rm tag f file. I want to uh, link, do, do this link to the SSH key. And I want the SSH key to be linked to this file. I don't want the file to be linked to the SSH key because what's gonna happen is when it goes to pull the file, I want it to really pull the private key. So we know that's gonna be home, SRV ADM, it's gonna be in the .SSH, and it's just called IDRSA. That's it. And then we're gonna link it to whatever this file name is. We're gonna paste it into what would be this file name and that should be everything. Cap it off with done done to close out our two loops. And so as this runs, it's gonna be running in the background for 10,000 iterations. Um, we've got that going. We've got our job. So our job, really, it can be anything. You, know, you can say onomatopoeia, you can say whatever. So, hello. Um, I'm a little disappointed I'm not seeing the printer here. Should be good. Let's just make sure our printer's still good. Can't connect to the printer. Let's go ahead and open this up. Printer is good. So we'll go ahead and add a job. Now it says bad guy again. Get our listener going. So when we transmit, it's going to go ahead and do this, and it becomes a race condition to see how fast we can have the loop running in the background, execute this, and we're going to see we're either going to get hello or we're going to get the RSA key. So I'll go ahead and start this loop, and I'm going to click print, and I got hello. Yeah, it's, it's definitely way past uh, my bedtime. I just realized I killed, the, I killed the shell because it was stuck, but 
The big mistake I'm making here is where it says do for ls in this file. I'm still back in home serve admin. This is all supposed to be done from the jobs directory. So we'll go ahead and do cd var dub 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 html. And I'll back up, say cd jobs. Now that I'm in the jobs folder, let's go ahead and just copy this. You should be able to copy and paste. Let me move this back out of the way. So we're ready to execute now. Get my listener going. Paste this down here. I'm going to say yada, 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 because I don't care what it is when I go to hit print. I got to hit this too. Oh my goodness. No listener. Oh, there we go. We got it. We got the RSA key. I made that way harder than it needed to be, but I'm sure other people experience this as well. I'm going to go ahead and copy this key. Um, I'll just do nano ID. Uh, RSA, paste this in here. As always, make sure to Shimano to 600. And then let's try and just log in. SSH, SRV, ADM at 10, 10, 10, 1, 86. Uh, I IDR say and we're in so we're admin so we're server admin at quick we do an LS we're not going to see anything look at the hidden files uh, not a whole lot we can look at there this box you can enumerate the crap out of it uh, honestly I, I went through and the easiest places to really start here. You've got these files here. You expect them to be there. There's a search history. Not a whole lot of information in there from Nano. All right. Cups, debug, error, a couple of config files, message of the day. And uh, you can try LinPs. You're not going to find this. This one is super hidden. Um, I did it this way, so find dot, and I just said anything. Um, I like to say name, anything. Uh, and then just do uh, execute cat on that. Uh, and then close it out. With this one, pipe it to more. You can look at each page. So this is just looking through every file. <laughs> it's horrible. Um, IPP, this looks like it is the printer. Keep coming down. There's a little something there. Server admin at, that's an at symbol, quick HTB. Some gobbledygook at printer, quick .htb. So usually when you see this, this is this is a login. This is a username, colon, password, at a website. So let's go ahead and take this. Go to burp. I like burp. It's just easy to coder. And I know that's a URL encoded. So that's a password. It's kind of a cool password. Let's see. I know we're already sitting at server admin, but if I can sue, do I still have a shell as Sam? Now that one looks like it's locked up pretty good. Hmm. I don't see. Sam, there's a payload, interactive. 
not sure which one's actually processing the script, but we can go ahead and try to SSH. Serve ADM at localhost. See if it lets me do that. I guess it let me do that because of what I am. Um, if we were going to try and just do uh, SSH SRV ADM at 10101086, it's going to ask us for a password. Put that password in. That's not his password. That's not his password. What if the admin used the same password? And we are root. So that's a little bit of a password reuse issue. So we'll go in, just do root. So cat root.txt. And we've got root. Obviously, who am I? And ID gets you the same information. So that was the long, painful and summary process of trying to go through HTTP3, moving over to UDP, and trying to pull down a website pivot into finding the username, the password, do a bypass to get into uh, some stuff. Uh, obviously try to do that remote code execution on ESI gate, enumerate some of the files, understand PHP, knowing how to read it and understand the logic and how you can defeat it. Uh, and then getting into that jobs print server, loading up a printer and being able to use that to uh, do a sim link to the SSH key. Super difficult box. Uh, a lot of fun doing it though. I learned a lot and I hope you did too. Uh, here's all my information. I just want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Reboot. Another great box to add to that collection that he's got going over on Hack the Box. I'd also like to give a shout out. I uh, had a three, three people help me. One of them's gone now, but two folks helped me on Discord, Apple Pie Guy and Deridian. Uh, this was a challenging box, and so they helped walk me through some of the processes of getting the quiche set up, getting the HTTP3 stuff. Uh, and then I had that other individual really help me with some of the scripting and, and trying to get the logic in order to get the ESI to work. Those, those are the big challenges. Once you get past that, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, but deep enumeration is required. So again, here's all my information. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have anything that you'd like to share, some information you'd like to see, please hit me up in the suggestions below. I'll try and get you the information that you asked for. All right. You guys have a great week. I hope to see you next week with a new box.